I'm Ryan, and this is Lutheran Lemonade. Cue the music. This drunken little German monk is intoxicated with himself. Sober him. <laughs> Light now, Francis. I'm Ryan, and this is Lutheran Lemonade, a weekly theological podcast where we sit down, relax, wear some comfortable clothes. We're at our kitchen table. We're enjoying a nice, cold glass of beer. It is a good Lutheran tradition that the best of theology and the best of theological conversation comes from grabbing a pint of beer, sitting down at the table, and talking with that drunken little German monk. (laughs) And you know that that joke, that joke lighten up Francis is only gonna work so long as Pope Francis is the Pope. I'm gonna have to change my bump music when we get a new Pope. Oh, lighten up Francis. So this is Lutheran Lemonade. Uh, you can find me at SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash Lutheran Lemonade every Thursday evening. This one's going to be late because I'm actually recording it on Thursday evening. You can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash 1517 films and you can watch the podcast uh, on YouTube at youtube.com at 1517 films. Just look for the circular logo logo with the word films underneath it and 1517 in the circle and you got me. So 1517 films, the theme there being contending for the faith, once for all delivered to the saints. But this, dear listener, is Lutheran Lemonade, a weekly theological podcast made to gladden the heart of man like a good wine. Christ-centered biblical theology gladdens the heart of man because it, it destroys our old Adam and tells us that the Bible, doctrine, theology, Christ. The whole of it is not about me. It's about Jesus for me. And last week was a pretty Lutheran episode, sick as I was. And oh, oh, did I get so sick after that. As a matter of fact, I'm still actually sick. I've got it still right here, this awful, just painful sinus pressure that I can't seem to shake. It's about as irritating as every single time when I hit the microphone. <laughs> and you can hear it. So uh, if you watch me on YouTube on a regular basis, sincerest apologies, there wasn't an episode this Wednesday. I do film them in bulk sometimes, but I had to get one out for Wednesday, and I could not do it. I was too sick. So last week's episode where I was starting to get sick was a distinctly Lutheran episode law and gospel and i encourage you to check that one out this one is going to be no different this one we're going to go to the book of james the second chapter specifically verse 24 which says you see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone oh my goodness oh my goodness call the theological gestapo uh all of Lutheranism is undone. The, 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 the Lutherans believe, teach, and confess that the core doctrine of the entire Bible is justification by grace through faith in Christ alone. But here we have it. I mean, it's as plain as the words on my screen. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. What is the author of the book of James trying to say? Well, if you ask our Roman Catholic friends, they will tell you that this is the only place in the Bible where the phrase faith alone appears. That's a, a handy trick when you're talking just about the English translation, uh, or they'll, they'll go to places uh, in the book of Romans where, Ju- where uh, Luther added the word alone to justify it by faith alone. He added alone. Well, he added it to the German language because the context of the Greek necessitated the word be added in German. So false accusations from our good friends over at the Roman Catholic Church, good old RCC. But this, this is, well, it's funny because good Catholic, Roman Catholic theologians know that this verse is there. And so they will talk about how they're saved by their works. You know, it's faith and works. Well, we're not denying faith, but it's faith and works. And the Lutheran's like, no, it's faith alone. 
like faith without works. Um, and but but the the Protestants they don't necessarily know that this verse exists, but they still believe they're justified by their works. Oh, you have to ask Jesus into your heart. Look, I, <laughs> we're not going to go too deep on this because I've still got a lot of sinus pressure, and I'm still actually in, in, in a monumental amount of pain from it. But I did want to talk about this. Look, James is not saying that we are justified by works and not by faith alone. Now, I know that's what it said. Well, you're contradicting the Bible. Now, hold on. We're going to talk about principles of biblical interpretation. We started that conversation last week in understanding that the Bible is divided into two doctrines out of the law and the gospel, or the law and the promises, I think would be a better way to say that. There, there's a, a really important hermeneutic principle of interpretation when it comes to reading the bible uh, it's a, a three rule system so rule number one is context okay very important rule number two is context and rule number three you guessed it context there's a couple other fun uh, hermeneutical principles uh, one that applies to this the pretext to any proof text is an absolute lack of context. So we're going to put this verse in its proper context. So I think the, the best way <clears throat> to do that is to start uh, in chapter in verse 14 of James. Uh, what good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warm and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one, you do well, even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. And in the same way, was not also Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way? For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also, so also, faith apart from works is dead. Now there's a lot going on here. That was James chapter 2, verses 14 through 26. And there's a ton happening here. And we could cherry pick. The Roman Catholics would, would cherry-pick the parts where it says Abraham was justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac at the altar. We could, uh, Rahab the prostitute was justified by works. Um, we could also look at, um, show me your faith apart from works and I will show you my faith by my works. Uh, I think is an important place to go. Uh, and also the very end, for as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. What is that? That's a weird pop-up. So I said the, 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 proof te or the pretext to any proof text is an absolute lack of context, so I'm going to go to the Apology of the Augsburg Confession, and I'm going to put into context what the Lutheran Fathers had to say during the time of the Reformation regarding justification. I think it's important we define our terms. Justification is a declaration that one is righteous. You are declared righteous. You are justified. That's what justification means. So how is one justified? Well, I hold that the Bible holds that we are justified by grace through faith in Christ alone. Sola gratia, grace alone. Sola fide, faith alone. Sola scriptura, Christ, uh, scripture alone. Solus Christus, Christ alone. I think there's one more sola deo gloria to the glory of God alone, uh, these solas of the Reformation. So let's turn uh, to the Apology of the Augsburg Confession. 
I'm just going to kind of pick up in the middle here, so it's going to sound really weird. Lest we may decide that faith justifies came from Paul without consideration, he fortifies and confirms this teaching by a long discussion in Romans 4. Afterward, he repeats it in all of his letters. So he says in Romans 4, 4 through 5, Now to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as his due. And to the one who does not work, but trusts him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Here, he clearly says that faith itself is credited for righteousness. Faith is that thing God declares to be righteousness. Paul adds that righteousness is credited freely. He says that it could not be credited freely if it were due because of works. Therefore, he excludes also the merit of moral works. For if justification before God were due to the moral works, faith would not be credited for righteousness without works. Afterward, in Romans 4, 9, we say that faith was counted to Abraham as righteousness. Romans 5, 1 says, Since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God. This means we have consciences that are peaceful and joyful before God. Romans 10, 10 says, With the heart one believes and is justified. Here he declares that faith is the righteousness of the heart. We also have believed in Christ Jesus in order to be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law. Galatians 2.16 For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Ephesians 2.8-9 but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. John 1, 12-13 And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. John three fourteen through 14-15 for God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. John three seventeen through 18 Let it be known to you, therefore, brothers, that through this man forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you, and by him everyone who believes is freed from everything from which you could not be freed by the law of Moses. Acts thirteen thirty eight through 39 how could the office of Christ in justification be declared more clearly? Paul says that the law does not justify. Therefore, Christ was given that we may believe that for his sake we are justified. He plainly denies justification by the law. So for Christ's sake, we are accounted righteous when we believe that God, for his sake, has been reconciled to us. Last verse. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Acts 4, 11 through 12. Now, why did I read all of those Bible verses? It goes back to that principle of biblical interpretation that I explained earlier. Context, context context, and that an absence of context is the pretext to a very good proof text. So <clears throat> all of these verses where Paul clearly lays out that we are justified by faith alone, apart from works. And now we have this one seeming passage. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. Is the Bible contradicting itself? No, the Bible does not contradict itself. So, <clears throat> another principle of interpretation outside of context, context, context is use the clear passages to interpret the unclear passages. Because we know that the Bible does not contradict itself, we know that this statement is true. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone, but we also know that it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of works. This is a gift of God.
We are justified apart from works of the law. We are justified by faith alone. It says it over and over and over all throughout the New Testament. So when we pile up all the verses that say we are justified by grace through faith in Christ alone, and we come to this one little passage where it seems like it says something different, we use the abundance of justification by grace through faith in Christ alone passages to interpret this one obscure passage. So let's be, excuse me, let's begin back at four, verse 14. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, basically, if one of you gives them a Joel Osteen sermon without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Now, what does James mean when he says faith without works is dead? He means that when a branch has been grafted into the vine, it flows, that it follows, that the branch must produce fruit. But is the branch credited for the fruit? No, never. The branch, because it freely receives from the vine all that it needs, Ephesians 2, uh, 10 uh, go look there. All of these good works have been given to us by Christ that we should walk in them. These good works that we do as Christians are gifts from God. And because we have faith, because we've been grafted to the vine of Christ, we produce them. Or I should say, the better way to say it is they are produced in us. They flow from Christ through us. That's why James says faith without works is dead because if a branch having been grafted to the vine becomes a dead branch that's it, it, it it's severed a, a branch grafted into a vine can can be ungrafted now don't read too much into the analogy uh, and this harkens back to the todd friel episode where if you if you um, d depart the faith uh, that well, that's on you so what James is driving at here, and I challenge you to go back and read the first uh, chapter, this one, the, the and the others that follow, you'll get a whole context. James is talking about Christian living. And so what we know to be true is that we're justified by grace through faith in Christ alone. How do we then behave amongst each other? Well, we bear good fruit towards each other. Jesus says, remember whatsoever you've done to the least of these, my brethren, that you have done unto me. So good works toward, and this is the example, isn't it? Someone comes into the church and you say, oh, good luck. God's richest blessings to you, but then you don't provide for them. Faith, true repentant faith in Christ drives you to meet the needs of the less fortunate, to do unto the least of these. That's what true faith does. So that's why James is saying faith without works is dead. Verse uh, 18, but some will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works and I will show you my faith by my works. This is, we, God knows our hearts. He knows who has faith and who doesn't. We don't. So we show our faith by our works. It's not saying that these works save us. This is how the outward sign of our inward faith, if I can borrow that egregious phrase. I think I'm going, I think I'm going to in this context. The, the good works of the Christian are the outward sign of an inward faith. Uh, they're, they're proof that the car is running. They're the exhaust coming out of the gas tank. They're the warm, or the, the, the muffler. Um, the, the, the <laughs> I'm so sick, I can't even come up with an analogy. So, <clears throat> um, yes, so, but that, let's go. Oh, it, um, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac and the altar? Ah, uh -huh. uh -huh. you silly Lutheran, says our Roman Catholic friends. Abraham was justified by works. You see, 
that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works. Uh Uh-huh, but verse 23, and the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. Now, if we think back to that first verse about the, the worker being due his wages, righteousness can't be credited to Abraham if he was simply doing what was expected then it's it's what he earned righteousness is credited to Abraham on account of faith because he simply believed so context 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 yes the author of James kind of says this in a dumb way that that Abraham was justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac but he clarifies The scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. So this was a credit, not something that Abraham earned by his works. And in 22, verse 22, you see that faith was active along with his works. Abraham did what must naturally flow from him because he had faith, because he had been grafted into the vine. So it's not Abraham who gets the credit for doing the good work. It's the vine. It's Christ himself. <clears throat> you see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. It's a silly way to say it. And I have every confidence to say it that way. That's a silly way to say it. And this might be part of why. Here's another Roman Catholic controversy. Luther referred to the book of James as a book of straw. But again, context. He wasn't saying it didn't have value. As a matter of fact, I think Luther would value straw very greatly. You see, his bed was probably made of straw. And and rest is very, very important. What he he's not saying it doesn't have value, it doesn't have purpose. He's just saying eh, it's not the biggest, best thing out there. That's what he's saying. And later in his life, Luther would write phenomenal things about the book of James. If you have yourself a copy of the Lutheran Study Bible, I strongly suggest you read all the commentary and all of the notes regarding every verse of the book of James. It's, It's an incredible resource, and you'll come to understand why Luther made that silly little straw statement. Luther considered this scripture. He kept it in his translation of the Bible because it had been canonized as scripture. So, verse uh, 26, For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. That's the point of what James is driving at here as we draw to a close of this episode of Lutheran Lemonade. James, the entire drive of the book of James, it's about Christians living amongst each other, how we behave with each other, especially as we gather in the Lord's house on Sunday, and that we can't see our own hearts or the hearts of others, so all we have to judge whether or not a person has faith is the good that they do towards their fellow Christians. That's all James is trying to say. When you compare this one, one little passage that says we are justified by works and not by faith alone to the plethora of verses that say we are justified by grace through faith in Christ alone, and you run these verses through their proper context and let the next verse clarify what the previous verse is saying, you come to understand that we can stand on the doctrine of justification by grace through faith in Christ alone, and this is good news. This is good news for you. Your works avail you nothing. You don't have to worry about whether or not you're good enough to get into heaven. Christ is good enough for you and in your place and all of your miserable failings and falling shorts he has borne in his flesh and suffered the condemnation of your sin in your place and he having taken your wretchedness gives to you credits to you who did not do the work all of his righteousness as luther calls it the happy switch 
I'm Ryan, and this is Lutheran Lemonade. Until next time, may God richly bless you because Christ has done it all for you.